As was pointed out in video 1221, the speakers of the Watchtower organization are so compromised in the Watchtower's false doctrines, they have zero credibility to preach righteousness. Here's another example from the March 2024 Watchtower Broadcasting. Our theme this month is Feed Your Hope. What do you need to feed hope? Two things are mentioned at Romans 15, 4. For all the things that were written beforehand were written for our instruction so that through our endurance and through the comfort from the scriptures, through the comfort from the scriptures, and through the comfort from the scriptures, we might have hope. What we take into our minds is vital to keeping our hope strong. We should ask Jehovah for guidance by means of his Holy Spirit, and then with the help of the publications of the faithful and discreet slave, we should meditate carefully on how the scriptures are being fulfilled. So the Apostle Paul spoke about comfort drawn from the scriptures, but this man is telling witnesses about asking Jehovah for guidance by means of his Holy Spirit, and then with the help of the publications from the so-called faithful and discreet slave. Once again, putting the governing body right up there with God, the Holy Spirit, and the divine word. First of all, let's be clear. Many people find things in the Bible difficult to understand and will turn to other publications by various theologians to shed light on the scriptures. So, in and of itself, it is quite reasonable that people will use other publications to shed light on the scriptures. So, let's have a look at how witnesses can use the publications to strengthen their hope or, according to David Schaefer, feed their hope. Do you remember how the publications from the slave shed light on the scriptures to feed the hope of witnesses in the early years of this organization to this day? Let's turn to a publication from the slave for some perspective. First of all, who is the faithful and discreet slave, or the faithful and wise servant, as they called it before the New World Translation, the Watchtower's version of the Bible existed? Let's turn to chapter 10 of the Jehovah's Witness history book under the heading, Growing in Accurate Knowledge of the Truth. Thus, in the October to November 1881 issue of the magazine, C.T. Russell stated, We believe that every member of this body of Christ is engaged in the blessed work, either directly or indirectly, of giving meat in due season to the household of faith. Is not the whole body individually and collectively giving the meat in due season to the household of faith, the great company of believers? So the man behind the publication of their literature claimed that the entire body of believers was the faithful and wise servant. That was the original belief until something changed. Over a decade later, however, Brother Russell's wife publicly expressed the idea that Russell himself was the faithful and wise servant. The view that she voiced concerning the identity of the faithful servant came to be generally held by the Bible students for some 30 years. So from 1881, the slave was Russell. Sometime after 1891, a decade later, over a decade later, Russell's wife single-handedly changed the doctrine. And it was taught to be the truth for until about 1921, some 30 years after give and take, according to this publication from the so-called Faithful Slave. It goes without saying then that in 1919, they were teaching that Russell was the slave. But hey, that was over 100 years ago. Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that the light of truth keeps getting brighter. So let us not hold them to ancient writings from the so-called slave. Let's turn to the 21st century, like, say, the year 2009. Jesus has appointed the faithful and discreet slave over his domestics, that is, the individual members of the slave class, to give them their food at the proper time. He has also appointed the slave over all his belongings. So we learned from the recent publication from the faithful and discreet slave that will feed the hope of Jehovah's Witnesses that Jesus appointed the faithful and discreet slave, pay attention please, over all 
his belongings. And this is their explanation of Matthew 24, 45 to 47. Let us look at a key point at Matthew 24, verse 46, as made clear by the New International Version. It will be good for that servant, whose master finds him doing so when he returns. It is on his return that the master declared the slave faithful and appointed him over all his belongings. On his return. So when did Jesus return? For clarification of that promise in the Bible, we turn to a publication from the faithful and discreet slave to see something that only Jehovah's Witnesses know, says the slave, on the question of whether or not Jesus has already returned. Jesus' disciples alone saw him depart, even as only Jehovah's Witnesses recognize his invisible return. So according to them, Jesus returned invisibly, and only Jehovah's Witnesses recognize that, according to the publications feeding their hope. And when did Jesus return? Yes, it is high time to awake from the gloomy darkness that envelops the old world system, including its religious organizations, and to enjoy the refreshing light of truth. It is already over 40 years since the manifold sign of Jesus' second coming began to be observed with the outbreak of World War I in 1914. Then again, Jesus may also have referred to the Apostle John in a prophetic or pictorial sense, and he may here have foreshadowed the remnant of the body of Christ that has remained until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ invisibly in 1914. This official presence begins with his second coming according to the sign that Jesus foretold, and also according to certain Bible time measurements, his invisible presence, or parousia, began in autumn of 1914 CE. According to the publication Feeding the Hope of Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus returned invisibly in 1914. So when did he appoint the faithful slave over all his belongings on his return in 1914? The answer is 1919, according to the slave's publication. This was published in 2016. Questions from Readers When were God's people held captive by Babylon the Great? That spiritual captivity lasted from the 2nd century CE to 1919. Why is this adjusted view warranted? All the evidence indicates that this captivity ended in 1919 when anointed Christians were gathered into the restored congregation. Consider, God's people were tested and refined during the years following the establishment of God's kingdom in the heavens in 1914. Then, in 1919, Jesus appointed the faithful and discreet slave over God's cleansed people to give them spiritual food at the proper time. Matthew 24, 45-47 If you are confused, it is understood. This is the publication from the faithful slave that is feeding the hope of Jehovah's Witnesses. So according to the slave, God's people were held in captivity to Babylon the Great since the 2nd century. And they were finally released, as all the evidence indicates, they said, when Rutherford and some of his colleagues were released from prison in 1919. It began with the first century Christians and ended with Rutherford. How important they think Rutherford must be. The confusion continues. They once again cited Matthew 24, 45-47, which states that the master will appoint the slave over all his belongings on his return. That's what the Bible says. They say that happened in 1919, four years after the master returned in 1914. And this is what the slave's publication said as late as 2010. In this time of the end, Christ has committed all his belongings, all the earthly interests of the kingdom, to his faithful and discreet slave, and its representative governing body, a group of anointed Christian men. Matthew 24 45-47 But three years later, in the July 15, 2013 study edition, 
Jesus' arrival to appoint the faithful slave over all his belongings did not occur in 1919, but will take place during the Great Tribulation. So, in 2016, they are saying Jesus gave the first appointment to serve spiritual food in 1919, because as of 2013, he no longer appointed the slave over all his belongings, but will do this on his supposedly third return. But there are two problems. Problem number one is that they keep citing Matthew 24, 45 to 47, where the Bible says the master will appoint the slave over all his belongings on his return. And they said he returned in 1914. So it cannot be that the slave got the first appointment on the master's return. But that's not what the Bible says, is it? Problem number two is that the slave's publication earlier stated that the first appointment was given to the first century apostles. Jesus assured us that after his death and resurrection, he would raise up a faithful and discreet slave that would serve as his channel of communication. Matthew 24, 45-47 It was the congregation of anointed Christians born at Pentecost 33 CE that was entrusted with the things revealed. Deuteronomy 29:29. So now they're trying to steal the first appointment from the first century apostles, which is untenable, because Jesus could not have promised to appoint a slave on his resurrection, then returned to heaven, leaving his household of faith without spiritual food for centuries, then waiting on his return during the last days to finally appoint someone to provide spiritual food. And the mess gets more muddled. Stephen Lett said that Jesus came and found a slave already doing the work, not that he appointed the slave to do the work. We know the master Jesus found the faithful and discreet slave spiritually feeding right-hearted ones in 1919. So this slave entered the master's household and started feeding the flock without being appointed, this imposter, this intruder. And the mess continues. They said that Jesus appointed the faithful slave in 1919, but as you saw from their publication, in 1919, the slave was teaching that Russell was the slave. Russell died in 1916, which leads to three problems. Problem number one, the appointed slave did not know he was appointed. Problem number two, the appointed slave was teaching that someone else was the slave. Problem number three, the appointed slave did not know that the appointment took place in 1919 because Russell died three years earlier in 1916. All this nonsensical crap printed in the publications from the faithful slave only on the subject of the faithful slave. So when David Schaefer talks about feeding the hope of Jehovah's Witnesses by using the publications to understand the Bible, he is recommending publications that cannot be trusted as indicated by the slave's own publication. The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. In fact, the Watchtower Publications Index includes the heading Beliefs Clarified, which lists adjustments in our scriptural understanding since 1870. In other words, not only can the uninspired, fallible slave make mistakes, but the slave has been making mistakes as recorded in their publications since 1870. Who then, in their right mind, could trust such publications from a slave making mistakes for more than 150 years, especially when, from the horse's mouth, God does not permit them to understand things they read in the Bible, no matter how many times they read it. Some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see, even though we read over it many, many times. You can't make this stuff up. Dear Watchtower members, you are building your hope on shifting and sinking sand. This organization is becoming more and more irrelevant. 
There is no talk that can be presented by your heavily conflicted speakers that has credibility. Look at what I have been able to share with you from your publications in response to just the first few minutes of the March 2024 JW Broadcasting. As they begin, you can see the problems. They only need to open their mouths and you see problems. Your faith is built on lies. The faithful and discreet slave doctrine is a man-made fable, twisting three verses of scripture. The same lie on which the organization started about the invisible return of Jesus continues to haunt you to this very day. For even after clarifying that it did not happen in 1874 but in 1914, it is only replacing one false teaching with another. So since they have been making mistakes since 1870, and since they have told you clearly that God does not permit them to understand things written in the Bible, no matter how many times they read it, how on earth can you feed your hope with publications from a slave that God will not permit to understand the Bible, who has been struggling to understand it and have been getting it wrong since 1870? Can't you see that this is a sinking, totally irrelevant religion? What else can they tell you that can be trusted to be true? Your religion is based on doctrinal lie after doctrinal lie that they have been changing since 1870. And here's a profound statement in the publications prepared by your so-called faithful and discreet slave to feed your hope. All the churches of Christendom were included in modern-day Babylon. Why? Because they all taught doctrinal lies. This clearly puts them in line as part of Babylon, based on their doctrinal lies, based on their own word, based on their own criterion. Jesus has not returned. His second coming is still future. Jesus never appointed any Jehovah's Witness or Bible student in 1919 to explain the Bible to you. This is an all-out doctrinal lie. At Matthew 24, 45 to 47, we read that for the time of the end, Jesus would appoint a faithful and discreet slave or governing body to explain the Bible to his followers and help them to grow in understanding of the truth. And if you want to see one last bit of evidence that they continue to feed you with fables, let's turn to their prophecy about the United Nations spearheading an attack on false religion. This was printed in the publications that are supposed to feed your hope. Jehovah will cut short the attack of the United Nations on false religion, not allowing true religion to be destroyed with the false. This will ensure that God's people will be saved. And these are the final days of the last days, according to the faithful slave. Shortly before the last day of the last days. Soon, Jehovah will cause the political elements of Satan's system, as represented by the United Nations, to attack false religion. Look around you, Jehovah's Witnesses. You claim you are witnesses of Jehovah. Can you be honest with yourselves? Do you see governments of the world leaning toward attacking all other religions and spearing yours? Or do you see your religion coming under attack exclusively as in Norway and right up there with a few others as in Russia? The total opposite of what you are taught in your publications to expect. When will you see that yet another expectation of the so-called slave is collapsing right before your very eyes. When will you wake up? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Mm -hmm.